So there's a number of phases when you're dealing with file services. The first phase is figuring out how you're going to make the files available to the users. The second phase is how you're going to lock them down with NTFS permissions and then moving into possible encryption. Well, we still have to audit those files in those folders. So what an audit policy is, and I'm going to use files and folders as an example as it applies to this module, but an audit policy allows me to audit everything that happens. Now, one exercise I did with a couple of classes, which was more fun than anything else, I had them audit every one for everything that they do on any file. And I had them literally open and close a couple of files, modify one, not modify another one, and delete a file. Very simple exercise, maybe three minutes long. They had hundreds of events. Remember, when you're dealing with files, you have re-authentication, meaning tickets and ticket granting tickets. So you go to a file share, it re-authenticates you. You read the properties, you open the file, you modified the file. There are so many things that happen that we don't even realize unless you realistically go through the steps. So the trick with audit policies is to know exactly what you're looking for and make sure only those are in the audit. When you configure advanced audit policies, you get a chance to implement auditing, but you're going to do this by using group policy or you can use the command line, which is audit poll. This means we create an expression-based audit policy and we also create policies like a removable device audit policy. So the first thing to understand is audit policies are created by category. So we will go through the different categories, but we have account management in example. Who added, removed, deleted, changed passwords on user accounts? We have Active Directory audit or object access, which means we clicked on something in the Active Directory database and made a change. And that change could be anything. It could be that we changed the properties on a printer. It could be that we created a group. It could be that we went in and added some things to a user account. Again, anything in, in Active Directory. So we have the file and object access, which applies to this category, which means we're going to turn on file and object access for a server, but then we get to tell it which files and which folders to actually audit and what we want to audit about them. So in example, I always use the light switch example. We all have that big red switch in our house somewhere that turns off power to the entire house or turns on power to the entire house. But if we turn on that power to the whole house, it doesn't mean that every light, every TV, every radio, every clock starts. Certain things are configured to automatically turn on when it sees power, and certain things aren't. I would want my fridge to automatically turn on, but I do not want every light in the house and the oven and the stove and the microwave to all turn on. So it's the same thing with file and object access. You turn on the policy, but then you fine tune it to say, which components of those will you be auditing? So we configure them by category. We put these settings in group policy. It's drilled down through computer configuration. And if you go through computer configuration and policies, you will see Windows settings and security settings. Right there, you'll see local policies, which really is your audit policy location. So let's take a look at the type of policies that we can use. We have account logon events which means a user is going to attempt to authenticate, and the default is we want to see all the successes. Now, this is different than logon events, and they're confused all the time. So an account logon event means I'm trying to authenticate against my user account with either the local SAM database on the server that's being audited or the domain controller services that just authenticated the login. But a login event can either be interactive or remote, which means I've already logged on to the domain. I did that at you know 8.30 this morning when I came to work. But now I need to access a share on a whole different server, which means I am a remote user to that server. And before it lets me in, it basically re-authenticates me for the purpose of going towards that data. So there is a difference between the two. So we have an interactive remote to access data. Um, and of course, the default is that we look for successful authentication. Now, 
This is good if you want to see who logged in and did what. So for that particular audit, it's great. So who logged onto the server at 10 o'clock? Well, I can filter through and find out who successfully logged onto the server at 10 o'clock. However, if I'm looking for someone to hack into the network, I'm not concerned about the um, attempts that were successful. I'm looking at the unsuccessful attempts. Look, there's 57 bad attempts in a row. Someone's trying to guess a password. So again, just understand what you're looking for. Account management is simple. We're going to create, delete, modify a user, a group, or a computer account. And again, we look at the successful ones on by default. Directory service access. Now, on the Active Directory objects, we have what is known as a SACL, a security access control list, which is what we can do to that Active Directory object. So whatever specified there, we're going to look at any successful events. Now, understand that, yes, the default is at successful events, but not every single object that we have in the forest. Go ahead and take a look at the schema. There's a lot of objects. So there's only a few objects, really, that we have that setting on. A policy changed. Who changed the user rights assignment policies? Who changed the audit policies? Who changed the trust policies? And we're just looking for who did that. A privilege use is a use or a user right. Um, who shut down the system, who changed the system time, uh, who loaded a device driver. The default is we don't audit that. System events, restart, shutdown, or changes that affect the security logs. We're going to see who did that. Process tracking is really more uh, application-based, so you're looking for activation and process exit as a process starts and stops. We don't turn that on by default, but you can really, if you're trying to figure out what a particular application is doing, you can do this. And object access, really, which is what applies the most to this module. Files, folders, registry keys, and printers that have an access control list. We don't audit them by default. Remember, it's like that light switch that turns power on to your house. You don't want every light, the microwave, and the oven to all start. We decide what type of devices should automatically start when it sees that power. In this demonstration, we're going to go ahead and show you how to configure audit policies and then, of course, where to look once you've configured them. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start the Group Policy Console, the Group Policy Management Console. I'm currently logged on to the domain controller as an administrator, which, of course, are the credentials that you need. Now, here, within the domain or within an OU, you can set your audit policies. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at File Server Audit, and let's give it an edit. So here, you have all the configurations that you would possibly want in which to choose from. So it's a file server audit, so we'd be looking at policies. And as we drill down through, we have Windows settings, we have security settings. Let me go ahead and pull this out a little bit so you can see where I'm clicking. And under local policies, we have audit policy. So let's go ahead and take a look at audit policy. So you will see here, auditing account login events, all the way down through system events, nothing here has actually been defined. So I just want to write a policy that allows me to look at object access. So let's go ahead and define this policy, and I would like to see both success and failure. Now that's all I'm going to do in this policy. Again, this is like supplying power to your house. It doesn't mean that every single appliance, oven, stove, etc. goes on automatically. Maybe the refrigerator does, which means we get a chance to take a look at each file and folder and then determine what gets audited. Now, we can also go ahead and audit login events or any of these others. 
But what I'm really interested in right now is the object access, and we're going to assign it to particular servers. So let's go ahead and close out of this. And what you'll see here is we have all of our organizational units. So I can apply this to auditing the accounting servers, the development servers, any domain controller. I can link this anywhere here that I want to. Now, because really all my file servers are going to be in some of the default containers, I need to make sure that I'm aware of where the servers are. So let's go ahead and just start Active Directory users. And this is more to show you because the utilities look very similar. Notice here under Domain Controllers, we have File Server 1, but under Computers, we have File Server 2. So both of them are actually within the domain environment. I could actually create an organizational unit called File Servers. Now this is going to take a lot of planning or very careful planning because right now some of my file servers are also domain controllers and I have to keep them in the domain controllers OU. And that's important to know because for planning your OU structure really does have to make some sense. So for now we'll just assume file server is only file server 2. So with that being known, let's go ahead and close out of that. And do a little refresh so that you can see file servers. And here under file servers, let's link an existing GPO, and that's our file server audit. When I right click, the link is enabled. I can make it enforced so it couldn't be blocked, but it won't be too important in this particular case. So now what we want to do is we want to make sure that file server 2 has this group policy assigned. So we'll go ahead and minimize this and move over to File Server 2. Here in File Server 2, let's go to a command prompt. And I'm going to do a GP update slash force. And that'll just bring that policy right down. I'm going to do a GP result slash R. And what you're going to see from the output, the applied group policy objects, is the file server audit. So now I know I have the ability to audit file server access. So that's what I'm looking for right here. So let's go ahead into Windows Explorer. And we have marketing which was, has brochures and PR files. So let's go ahead in the marketing and go to Properties, under Security, into Advanced, and you'll see you'll have this Audit tab. So we have an ability now to audit these files. So let's go ahead and hit Add. So we get to select a principal. Now technically, you should never use everyone unless you really are unsure who's accessing the files. So typically I would look at a group, I would look at a user, because I'm trying to find something out very clearly. But for now, I'm happy to just pick the everyone group for the purpose of audit logs. We're looking at success, this folder, subfolders, and files. I'm looking at basic permissions that they've executed. And I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. And we'll apply it, and we'll OK it, and then we'll hit it again. So at this point, anything that happens in that directory should be audited. So we know the policy was created and applied, and I've gone ahead and, and created the policies itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change directories into marketing and I'm going to make a directory for advertising. I'm going to remove a directory called advertising. 
Now I'll go ahead and double click. We'll look at PR. Let's go ahead and add a new file or a new folder. Maybe it's something that I edit. And yes, each one of these, as I call out the commands, is actually what we're doing. So it's a create a file, but then I'm opening a file and I'm editing it. So let's go ahead and edit. See the only thing I can actually draw. So good enough for now. I'm going to save it and close it and close it. So what we've basically done is created a number of events and those events are because of the file auditing. Where we're going to find those is going to be Event Viewer. Windows Logs, Under Security, So notice under security, we have an awful lot of events. In fact, there's over a thousand, but they don't all apply to what it is I'm doing. But we can see that we have these file system issues. And you'll see handles to objects were closed. A handle to an object was requested. Another object was closed, and it's all the administrator accessing different processes and Windows Explorer. So as we move up, you're going to see these are all audit success successes, and you'll even see here my audit policy changes because there are different categories. But even as I drill down through file system, an attempt was made to access an object. And you should see here, we used Windows Explorer. We read it. And you'll see here's marketing and PR. So as I drill down through all of these, you should see everyone who's accessed this file and everything that they've done. So again, one of the reasons that I always say be extremely careful when working through auditing, I intentionally did everyone and everything but as you heard me read, look, I clicked on the directory. Clicking on it is enough for it to check permissions to see if we have permission. Then I opened it. Then I listed files. Then I attempted to open object. Then it was opened. Then it was modified. All of these commands in that very short period of time took us through all of these file system events that you see. Notice the date and the timestamps. This is all still within a couple of minutes of each other, and there are literally a few hundred of them. So if you're looking for auditing on files and folders, who are you auditing and exactly what are you looking for, or you'll have an awful lot of information to filter. Now, as you become more and more used to event viewer and auditing, you can always create custom views. And when you identify the events in question, like which event is modification of a file, you'll be able to filter right through to exactly what you're looking for.